So Alinda, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into a subject that is more important than ever, employee engagement. And you are the expert globally because you've been working with the likes of Woolworth, I believe for 28 years, Coca-Cola, Distel. You've been working with global brand, brands at scale, empowering thousands and thousands of employees. So if you can tell us uh, just how important is employee, co uh, employee engagement today? I think it's critical, Nick. Um, if you see the business world as a river, and this organization is our boat on the river, it's critical for them to move forward and stay afloat. And your employees can be three kinds of people on this boat. They can either be pirates, where they actually sabotage the boats while they're inside the boat and actually being paid by the organization, but they're working against it. They can be passengers being paid, putting in their time, but not their full focus and full effort. Or they can be active paddlers, full focus, full effort, know exactly what their role is, know what their part is, and be internally motivated because they want to make this organization successful. And that is what engagement is about. It is about having an internal commitment to contribute fully to the success of the organization. And employee engagement is a win-win. I mean, when, you, when, you, when employees do that, they take pride in their work. Um, they feel they, a sense of achievement. They feel they are part of something. They feel they belong. Um, and and in, a, in an environment where, where it's really about where engagement is good, you also have equal attention on creating that kind of environment in the boat that people will want to paddle. Right. Um, so there's no force. There's no threat. There's no doing it because you need to comply. It's something internally that's created. And mm. when people feel strongly connected to the organization and that inspires them to be their best. What are some of the common mistakes that leaders of organizations are making today as far as employee engagement is concerned? I think a very common mistake is to underestimate the importance. Right. Sometimes people tell me, how often should we do engagement? Once or twice a year? Mm. Or people say, you know, we have pizza Fridays. We are doing engagement. Or we have an employee of the month award. It's, it's engagement. Employee engagement is made up of many different pieces. It's about participation. It's about belonging. It's about inclusion. It's about recognition. It's about using strength. There are many pieces of the puzzle. And organizations tend to focus on one and say, okay, we are doing it. And then you get everything else wrong. So it's really understanding that employee engagement is a complicated process and it needs full commitment. It's something you yeah. are, it's something you live. It's not something you take out of the cupboard mm. and polish it now and then for some special event and then say we've done engagement. Mm. It's, it's really it needs to be part of the culture. It's the way people are around this organization. And that is what, and it starts at the top. It starts with, with your senior executive leaders really valuing their employees value the contribution that the employees make and say, we want to create an, an environment where people are engaged, but they also are being valued, where they, where they contribute, but where they feel important and that their needs are also being taken care of. And that is where it's a win-win situation. Um, employees must, must give a lot, but they also must experience that they get a lot. And if you can get that, um, that is what the organization should be striving for. Alinda, what is your advice for leaders? Uh, what is really important to create an engaged um, employee workforce? I think, as I said, there's many pieces of the puzzle, but if I have to identify the two most important one is connecting employees to the purpose of the organization. Nobody wants to only be a pair of hands. Nobody wants that. We all want to feel we're contributing towards something bigger. So we always talk about the four P's that are important, that every leader needs to create every day. And the first one is give people an idea of the purpose. Why? Not only the what they have to do, but the why. Why is what you are doing important? What contribution is this making? Number two is the picture. How does this fit into the bigger picture? What does this industry do? What's our competition doing? Um, that gives a very important bigger picture that people very often lack when there's only focus on the what you have to do and how you have to do that. The third one is the, the, is the plan. 
where does this fit into our plan? Where do we want to go as an organization? Why is that important to us? And how do we plan to get there? And then the fourth one is what parts do you play? Um, it's very difficult for people, if people, if, I mean, if I would give you a puzzle and I would ask you bills, I mean, you would, you would immediately ask me, what's the, where's the box stop? You know, what am I building? Right. And many employees don't have a box stop. They are just putting pieces together. They don't know if the piece of blue here is actually a sea or a river or the sky. Right. But they are supposed to build. And many leaders underestimate how getting people those four Ps, the importance of that. Mm -hmm. What I also find very, very sad, as I said, the two most important things is how often employees are not valued for the contribution. I sometimes get managers to tell me people are paid for what they do. They're paid for the job. Why must I keep on saying thank you, thank you, and well done? I mean, we are human. We want to know that we are being seen. Salbona, you are seen, you are valued. And it costs nothing. I read an article in the, in the um, Wall Street where they said recognition and appreciation is the most, the cheapest and the most valuable way to bring out the best in people. And, and many, many managers have not been brought up with that. They themselves have not experienced that and they don't know how to give it. Um, and I think between those two, the purpose and the appreciation and the valuing people and recognizing a contribution and good work, between that alone, you can already start to significantly shift your um, engagement levels in organizations. Well, Alinda, free to grow, you work a lot in manufacturing industry where there's large numbers of uh, employees. What in your experience have you seen uh, to be some of the major obstacles to employee engagement? I think if you look at that level, we find that with your shop or your bargaining unit, there's a very specific challenge in the way they see themselves and the world and the way they view the organization. And that is the biggest obstacle to engagement. Mm. Um, for me, it's like your leaders can do a lot to try to create engagement. They can involve people, etc. But if they keep on making an effort and the people are not ready to be engaged, even the best leaders can become disillusioned and despondent, saying it doesn't work. And we often find that. And it's like pouring water into a bucket where the bucket is broken. The bucket has holes in. So you keep on pouring and pouring and pouring. And there's just a lot of your effort gets wasted. And for me, the bucket is employee mindset. And um, two things, as I said, how they see themselves, how they see the world, um, feelings of not taking ownership, Blaming, not taking responsibility, saying other people should be doing things for you. The organization should give you a better life. But, and, 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 and not taking the ownership for saying, if it's to be, it's up to me. There's a huge gap in ownership. There's a huge gap in optimism where yeah. people um, have so many challenges in their lives, understandably, that they struggle to see the yet. This may not be perfect. This is tough yet. There is enough for me if I want to do something. So that is important. Self-esteem, um, not having the confidence in own abilities, and then and then just having been knocked so many times that they struggle to 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 bounce back. So that needs to be attended, and that can be we can help organisations with that. Um, and the second one is also how they view the organisation. Um, the number word I've heard for work is to be changed. Um, and it says so much about how many people go to work at that level every day, thinking they're going, we've had people who said every day is like going to a funeral, every day is like going to jail. If that's the way you see work, um, then it means you're definitely not going to paddle in that boat. Um, and that is why it's so important that one do not just assume that employees should have or expect that they should have a positive mindset about themselves, the world and their work in the organization, but that you should actively shape it. And that's exactly what we do. And that is why we get such excellent results in organizations, because we are able to shift mindsets, touch hearts, that will then shape behavior. Um, and it's because we follow inside out approach and not only outside in.